आदरणीय मेरे गुरु शेखर सर हार्दिक नमन करना चाहिए सो द टाइटल अफ माई टक इज एक्सपेरिमेंटल रियलाइजेशन अफ टपोलॉजिकल इन्सुलेटर एंड बियड सो दिस इज बेसिकली द एक्सपेरिमेंटल टक सो इज बेस्ड अन बेसिकली द फोटो इमिशन सो इट्स लाइक फोटोन इन इलेक्ट्रोन आउट प्रोसेस so when i was putting slides for this um, seminar so i thought okay i will give some sort of overview of what's happening in this field so what i did before and where the field is going on right now so my talk is basically based on along that line okay so before i start so i would like to acknowledge my collaborator so basically for spectroscopic experiment so my group works with suyang ju of harvard university uh, jai dhasan of princeton university and thomas duraki which of los alamos national lab so my group goes to the various synchrotron facility user facility all around the world so we go to advanced light source berkeley stanford synchrotron radiation center stanford and swiss light source in switzerland psi pulsar institute and we also works on various laser based system so my group go to the university of tokyo working with professor sixins lab we also work locally professor chini and professor jungu chang at ucr and for the crystal growth uh, actually we also grow some crystal but we always work on the best crystal grower in all around the world so for example professor robert kaba in princeton university eric bauer of los alamos national laboratory um, dario kazarski of polish academy of science and we also work in the locally like professor nakajima at ucr and recently we started working with david mandras of university of tennessee similarly we work with uh, raman sankar and feng chen chu of taiwan so our goal is always trying to get the best sample best single crystal as possible so for theory we also work all around the world so basically uh, currently i am working with uh, sin lin and arun banchil of northeastern university professor peter opener of utsala uh, utsala university university of sweden so this is my group my student and postdoc and the talk i'm going to present today were mostly carried out by postdoc uh yang yang liu and my graduate student um uh, mafazal hosen who recently graduated and moved to the um, move out of the group for postdoctoral position so i would also like to acknowledge my funding agency so uh these are, these four are my basic uh, funder for the research so basically i'm getting uh, a lot of support from air force office of scientific research uh, department of energy uh, national science foundation and recently i got a muri grant from uh, department of defense so these four are kind of um, the funding agency they are supporting us doing all this research okay so this is the outline of my talk so i will try to introduce uh some technique that i use is like rpes and time resolve rpes so angle resolve photo emission spectroscopy and i'll try to introduce quantum materials topological insulator ternary binary topological insulator and i'll try to introduce some semi metal i'm going beyond the insulator and coming back to the semi metal like dirac vial or nodal line semi metal and i will try to show some of our recent result and dynamic response of topological material and the science question i would like to pose is do multi fermionic properties exist in a single material so this this is our kind of goal of this talk try to answer this question so suppose you have a single material that single materials can hold a multi fermionic state like many state in the single material is that possible or not or is it possible to realize that kind of material so that is kind of our goal or science question on this talk okay so let's talk about the technique so technique as i said before so it's just a 
photo emission technique, simple photo emission technique. So photo emission technique is basically the photon in electron out. So you strike your sample by the photon and due to the photoelectric effect, so electron are coming out. So this is kind of basic fundamental principle. So yeah, so everybody knows about this phenomena of photoelectric effect. So basically observed by Hors in 1887 and later explained by Einstein by considering the quantum nature of light. So as you know, this H nu equals to H nu naught or work function plus EV, which is equals to half MB square. So it's basically the basic physics principle is just uh, this photoelectric effect. So as you know that Einstein actually awarded Nobel Prize for the discovery of this laws for photoelectric effect. So this is then, and now we have a, uh, now we have a, so many user facility or synchrotron based facility all around the world where we have this state of the art technique so it's basically the so the the synchrotron facility so your synchrotron synchrotron facility is actually diverted to the beam line so this is kind of beam line and there through the beam line there is very bright light is coming high flux tunable photon energy and that light actually goes to this kind of vacuum chamber. So it's a ultra high vacuum chamber like pressure is 10 to the power mi minus 10 to or, or even lower. And they have very sophisticated this hemispherical analyzer. And by studying this kind of uh, light matter interaction or doing this kind of photo emission, so a band structure for surface and other electronic properties of the material can be studied. So my group actually goes to this uh, Swiss light source. So this is one of the beam line over there, address beam line. So my group also works in advanced light source, Berkeley, California. And we go to the beam line because it has a couple of advantages. So one is bright light source, another is tunable photon energy. So you can tune the photon energy you want. But we can also do the, this kind of measurement in, in house. So for example, this is uh, my lab at UCF. So the difference between going to the national lab and in-house is that, so national lab, you have bright light, tunable photon source, but in your lab, you are kind of limited with the photon energy. So for example, in my lab, I have a helium lamp, so which can only provide either uh, 21 EV or 42 EV. But in the national lab, you can get whatever photon energy you want. And also, if you use the laser source, you can get some particular photon energy. So that's why always this spectroscope, spectroscopic measurement, if you want to do the wide range national lab is uh, your first priority. Okay, so let's talk about the basic principle of angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy. So it is basically the, as I said, it's a photon in electron out process and you have this a very sophisticated hemispherical analyzer. And using the conservation of energy and momentum, you can actually convert uh, your kinetic energy of the scatter electron and this polar angle theta and phi to the momentum and energy. So by doing so, you can actually extract the value of electronic structure like Fermi surface, core level, band structure, dispersion map, and so on. So this, this is basically the momentum space, space technique. So the K space technique. So you can get the energy versus momentum relation. So actually what does RPS do? So RPS actually measure the spectral function. This is A as a function of uh, K omega. So K is momentum, omega is the energy. So it is multiplied by the Fermi function. So what is that means? you can only measure the occupied part. So you cannot see the unoccupied part using this normal RPS. And this is your matrix element term. So that means your intensity depends upon the polarization of light or the K value, or you have what is the energy, photon energy and so on. So what is the spectral function? So that is basically the imaginary part of Green's function. So Green's function has this self energy term so which can be written as this real part of self energy and imaginary part of self energy. So by analyzing the RPS data, you can actually get 
uh, self energy so that is corresponds to the lifetime of the quasi particle or uh, read normalization factor and so on so basically when you strike your sample by the light by the photon what happens is basically the your electron actually interacting with other electron or spin excitation or phonon or some some sort of other mode so the ejected electron is actually not the free electron it's we call quasi electron or dress electron it's not free it has this information of this other interaction so artists actually measure this uh, quasi quasi particle or dress electron not the free electron okay so this is our spectra so that's what we see so what is this so i will be showing a lot of this kind of spectra so let me spend uh, some time to explain this so this is the energy versus momentum okay so e versus k plot so k is momentum so momentum is kind of velocity and this zero is a fermi level so you cannot go to above the fermi level so this is your occupied state okay so below that is you are going to the higher binding energy so this uh, center feature is your band actually so your band looks like this okay so you can analyze this band by considering uh, two ideas one is called edc called energy distribution curve so that means if you cut along the energy axis so the y axis is energy so if you get, if you get a slice along this way so this you got this uh, um energy distribution curve so if you cut along this way so you get this mdc momentum distribution curve okay so if you cut along the momentum axis you see the peak here so this is actually one of the famous spectra of high tc cube rate along the nodal line so people spend many years trying to understand on this high tc cube rate what's happening on the nodal direction so for this talk we are actually focusing on the topological insulator for so for the topological insulator we see this kind of feature so this is basically the energy versus momentum e versus k car and here you have this typical bismuth selenide spectrum so you have this bulk conduction band you have bulk valence band m shape over here and there is a surface state connecting bulk conduction band and bulk valence band so uh, using this angle result photo emission spectroscopy you can actually uh, separate what is the bulk band what is the surface band what is their spin where is the dirac point and so on so basically in this talk i will be showing many of this kind of feature or energy versus momentum we call dispersion map or ek curve so i'll be showing a lot of this and also try to analyze them edc or mdc if you cut along energy direction or momentum direction okay so so for the surface science so this is kind of a very important curve called universal curve or mean free path versus kinetic energy so this is kind of a i would people also say like bottleneck for the surface science so what is that means so mean free path inelastic mean path mean free path we can understand is like how deep electron you are knocking out okay so for the conventional rps so we use this photon energy range so you can see around 10 to only 20 or 150 eb so that means you see the inelastic mean free path so that means is almost around 0.5 uh, nanometer it's like five angstrom so you are taking out the electron just five angstrom below the top surface so that means your surface has to be very clean otherwise uh, if surface is not clean, your light cannot penetrate too much deep, so you cannot get the uh, bulk in information or not. No, I mean not any information. But you can go to the higher photon energy, something like this. If you go to the higher photon energy, you can do, you can increase the bulk sensitivity. You can go a little bit deeper, but your momentum is depend upon, upon the kinetic energy, so you can start to. Uh, lose the momentum resolution so people has gone like keb or so on so that is just a uh, uh, photo emission spectroscopy or hard x-ray they can go to kilo ev uh, to do this kind of photo emission spectroscopy but the good news is 
Uh, people can study this 6 CV or 7 EV, where you can see the bulk sensitivity is much higher, almost 10 times. So where you can actually go to the really deep to the sample and knock out the electron and you can get the bulk sensitive measurement. So this is um, the way people are going now for the, to study the bulk sensitive measurement. So they use, especially the nonlinear crystal like BBU or KBBF and you know, using the ties of fire laser, they actually can go to the this lower photon energy range. So this reason is forbidden because uh, your work function is larger than the uh, your uh, incident energy. So you cannot knock out the electron. But people have done a lot of work on this region where they can actually make the high resolution, low temperature. So they have some orbital dependent measurement like beta DF selectivity and so on. So this region is kind of uh, important. Okay, so that's about the normal RPS, but we can do the time resolve RPS also. So for the time resolve RPS is basically the, so you already have a two parameter, energy versus momentum. Now you can add another parameter that is time. Okay, so for example, they usually use pulse light source. So it's like a pump probes set up so what you do like you pump your system so you use like pump pulse and what the pump pulse do so you is actually excite your carrier so it it goes above the fermi level so for the normal rps you can only measure up to here but if you pump it so you can actually see this uh, quasi state or meta stable state or out of equilibrium state and you can see this kind of uh, conduction band and surface state and so on but those are metastable state or quasi state. So they don't stay much longer, like in one picosecond, you can see that. But after some time they actually decay and they come to the, as like original state. So this is kind of very interesting. So, so there you can actually study the dynamics or how fast they decay. Is there any correlation in the unoccupied side? So what are the scattering channel? Is this the, um, uh, in state uh, intraband or interband, or is there any more? What sort of uh, phonon mode are there? So all this kind of thing we can study using this pump probe. So for example, so this this data is taken using the ties of our laser. So we have a pump energy 1.5. Okay, so probe energy is 6 CV. So so before the pump. If you don't pump it, your natural Fermi level is over here. It's well below the your Dirac point. But if you pump, what happens is you can start to see the state above the Fermi level. So, for example, if you pump here, you can see that the new state populated. But they don't stay there much longer because you can see that within 10 picoseconds, everything's recombined into the balance band. Okay, so from here we can actually analyze how is the relaxation dynamics or what is the uh, surface versus bulk relaxation dynamics? Is there any correlation, those kind of thing? Okay, I'll show you more data on, on this measurement later. So we can also do the this dichroic photo emission. So dichroic is like you can use the polarized light. So like circulatory polarized light, like circulatory polarized left or circulatory polarized right. And then, uh, what you can do with circulatory polarized light is that, sorry, so like using right circulatory polarized, left circulatory polarized, and if you take a difference, you can clearly see the signature. So this is kind of very important for the topological insulator because uh, so they it has a very strong spin orbit coupling. So if it has very strong spin orbit coupling, you can. So this uh, polarized light actually coupled with orbital and you can clearly see this uh, signal like a blue red signal, very clear. So this dichroic photo emission is also very important to get the orbital information, especially from this, this kind of quantum materials. Okay, so that's all about the photo emission. We also do some sort of spin polarized photo emission. You can get the information of the spin. So for that, we actually pass the uh, electron, this photo electron to the MOD detector. So MOD detector is basically you have a, a high G uh, target like you know, some ferromagnetic target or some sort of a gold target. 
So the, the fast electron actually hit that target and then it depends upon the spin they will scatter and there's a mod detector uh, in up spin or down spin. So it's basically the RPs can go into the all possible direction. So you can measure the spin, you can measure the time, energy and momentum is kind of basic things. You can go to the unoccupied side and you can also study this orbital character. Okay, so that's all about the photo emission. So uh, this, uh, to summarize in photo emission, so photo emission is just photon in electron out process. So currently due to the advancement of this technology, the photo emission is going into the all